something a little bit different today. <laughs> it's a mower vlog. There's nothing serious, just screwing around, got to cut the grass, so I figured I'd give this a try and see how it works out, if it works at all. Maybe too loud, I don't know, but we're going to give it a shot. It looks like I haven't mowed in like forever, and that's not really the case. It's only been right at about a week, but it's rained, and I mean downpoured a ton since the last time I mowed. So, it's pretty shaggy out here. But, anyway, that's what we're doing. Now, I didn't just want to talk about mowing the grass. Now, there are a couple other things. One, Mrs. Moto Mat Man went out on Saturday. I did too. On our bike, separately. And went to do a moto ball. And I don't know what it was she did, but she had me check to make sure her chin mount camera was recording when she left, and it was. The little red light was blinking on her GoPro, and I don't know what she did. Apparently, somehow, she shut it off, and it stopped recording. Now, she still had an enjoyable ride, and we got footage from her GoPro that was mounted to her bike, but no audio. And when she got home, she was telling me about how great a ride it was, and how she did this and that, and talked about all these different things, and and how she thought that it was going to be a a better moto walk than she had done in the past. So then we go in the house and I take out the SD cards out of her cameras and no video from the one mounted to the helmet. I mean it was there was the video of me looking at it to see if the see if it was blinking but then there was nothing really after that and then there was video when she got home and into the garage and turned off the camera there was video of her turning back on the camera <laughs> so I don't know what happened Of course here. The other thing was is a little bit of an update on the Open It Up Ohio. And forgive me when you see, see this mulch bed here. It hasn't been mulched this year. It's a desperate need. You know, but with stuff being closed, I was working on some projects in the house first getting those handled like painting our oldest daughter's room and stuff like that she wanted it to be softball themed so it was it was a project and a half getting it done that's now done now I can get back to like dealing with some of the outside stuff again but anyway that's not what I was talking about things opening up which is a good thing but again you know, my last moto vlog I talked about how the patios and stuff for the restaurants were going to be open and unfortunately I mean they're still open but unfortunately, you know, you were supposed to keep the same social distancing that you were before. And at the restaurant or at the bar, you were supposed to stay seated, not get up and wander around and 
socialize and mingle and stuff. And they were supposed to be limited to half capacity for the patio. And unfortunately, you had some people that uh, I'll call them knuckleheads that couldn't follow the rules. And you had video. Like, like these people didn't think that somebody was going to snap a video with their phone. I mean, come on. You know, 15 years ago, you probably could have gotten away with it. Because really, the only way that anybody was going to video you was if they had a camcorder or if they had a GoPro. But today, with everybody having a smartphone, I mean, you can't get away with anything. But this particular, this one particular restaurant, bar and grill type establishment had seating for like 25 out on their patio. Which is cool. The only problem was, is there was like 150 people on the patio. Because what was happening was, you had knuckleheads that instead of going in through the restaurant, or going in through the gate for the patio, these knuckleheads just stepped over the waist high um, wrought iron fence and just went in. And then they weren't, they were wandering around. They, they weren't keeping the, you know, six foot uh, social distancing guidelines or any of that. And the governor got kind of irritated with that when he saw that footage. You know, not that, and, and I will say this, and I want to preference the preference this by saying, you know, I don't consider myself a Buckeye. I live in Ohio. I've said many, many times before that I consider myself Southern. I grew up in the South. Um, if you were to make me pinpoint a state, I would, I would have to say that, that I'm a Virginian. I spent a lot of time there growing up. Uh, in my formative years, like through fourth grade, and, and then moved back, moved away, moved to North Carolina, moved back, but moved back to Southern Maryland, and then later on in life, lived quite a few years in uh, Virginia Beach, and Virginia Beach is what I consider home. That's where I call home. So, you know, I, I, I don't. It's not like I'm a big Governor Mike DeWine supporter or anything, but I will say this, that politicians throughout our country and political pundits and whatnot, and even heads of state and foreign countries have all come out and applauded the way Governor DeWine has handled this pandemic and taking early and decisive action and then opening up things in a methodical way with a plan on how to do it. Now, there were people that questioned his plan on how to open it up because the state shut down as a whole and then it's reopening as a whole. Why not do it based on things like hot spots and whatnot, open up certain counties before others? Like I think in Pennsylvania they have some kind of color-coded thing going on where they have red, yellow, green or whatever, and they're opening up different parts of the state at different times using this, this color system. And, and I understand that, and I understand the thought behind it. Here's the problem. What if, your, what if your county is red, and the county next to you is yellow, which allows some things to be open that are not open in your county? Are you going to just stay in your county 
and not venture into the county that's yellow to, let's say, go to the store to buy beer. Of course you're not. If your county is red and you can't buy beer in your county or wine or liquor because it's red, but the county next to you is yellow and you can buy beer, wine, and liquor there, you're just going to get in your car and you're just gonna, or truck and you're just going to drive to the county that's yellow. And anybody that thinks that that's not going to happen is an idiot. I mean, you have... You've had counties, my dad talks about, about Texas in his youth. Um, his family lived in Hunt County, Texas. And Hunt County, Texas was dry. But the counties around, around Hunt County were not dry. So what did they do? They went to the county next door. Now, I haven't had any experience growing up with dry counties, but the state of Scout, South Carolina, at least when I lived there in, in the 90s, There was no beer, wine, or liquor sales on Sunday. And I lived in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Well, actually, I lived in Boiling Springs, for anybody that knows that area. But, South Carolina was dry. Now, all we had to do was jump on Route 26, and in about 20 minutes to a half an hour, we were in Tryon, North Carolina. North Carolina allows the sale of beer and wine on Sunday. So what did we do? If we needed beer or wine, and it, most of the time it was beer, but if we needed beer on Sunday, we just drove to try on North Carolina. And that's the reason why the governor of Ohio is opening everything, closed everything together and opening everything together to prevent people from going from one county to another and it's not that he didn't want people spending money in another county but let's say you live in a county that has that has a hot spot with the pandemic which would be the reason why your county was let's say red does the governor really want people from that red county to drive into a county 
that the pandemic seems to be under control. Ah, mud. Got wet spots in the, in the yard. Uh, does the governor really want people to drive from a county that's, that's red into a county that's yellow? No, because now you're running the risk of bringing more people that have been exposed to the coronavirus into a county where few people have it. And let's be honest, it only makes sense. Right, the governor did something that I'm sure people on the border in PA were not real happy about, and that's counties in Ohio that were bordering Pennsylvania. He forbid the sale of beer, wine, and liquor to people from outside the state of Ohio. So in other words, you had to show an Ohio driver's license or ID to buy beer, wine, or liquor in like Mahoning, Astabula, and Trumbull counties because the governor of Pennsylvania had banned the sale of beer, wine, and liquor. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know how much sense that made considering that grocery stores and gas stations were open. Why are you limiting what your grocery store and a gas station can sell? I don't understand. But anyway, that was the case, and our governor decided that he didn't want people from another state just driving into our state to buy beer, wine, or liquor because it would make it tough to to track the pandemic, not just keep it out, but track the virus and outbreaks. You know, was there an outbreak in Trumbull County because the people in Trumbull County weren't doing what, following the rules and being careful? Or was it that it was being brought in from Pennsylvania? No offense to anybody from Pennsylvania. I don't think any of y'all would have, would have intentionally brought the virus into us. Um, Christopher David lost in the deep. Uh, I know you were out in our area over the weekend. I wasn't worried you were bringing the pandemic to us. But that, that's why the governor had done what he did. But anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. Say we're starting, you know, again, we're starting to open stuff up. But we got to be careful at Knucklehead. Um, and be careful, too, that as things open up, no matter where you are, be careful because just because they're opening up stuff doesn't mean that it's over and before cutting the grass I had to go to the gas station and get gas for the mower get gas for the tractor and I also like to keep a gas can a small two and a half gallon gas can on hand in the garage for the bikes both for the kids dirt bikes and also like the, the sporties don't have a fuel gauge and they don't even have a low fuel light on them. My Maxim doesn't have a fuel gauge, but it has a little red idiot light that tells you when you're low on gas. So like Saturday before Mrs. Moto Madman went out to ride, I checked her gas for her and put gas from that gas can in. Now, it's a two and a half gallon can, but I only ever put two gallons in, so I'm not spilling it all over the tank trying to put it in. You know, because it's got to be one of those stupid safety cans where you got to, you know, the vent is built into the nozzle. They got to push down on it, so I end up spilling gas. But her bike took the full two gallons. And it doesn't sound like a big deal, other than the fact that she's got, on her sporty, she has a peanut tank, just like I have on my sporty. And those damn things only hold two and a quarter gallons. <laughs> so, her bike being able to take two full gallons meant that uh, she only had a quarter of a gallon of gas or less to hit her bike. 
So it's probably a good thing not saying, oh, I'll just run up to the gas station to get gas. Because as I'm sure a lot of you have seen, our gas station is not around the corner. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like three miles away, which I would imagine a quarter of a gallon of gas to get her there. Remember, not a quarter of a tank, a quarter of a gallon. I'm sure it would have probably gotten her there. <laughs> but, rather be safe than sorry. I definitely don't want to be the person on the other end of the phone as Mrs. Moto Map Man is yelling about the fact that her bike ran out of gas before she got to the gas station. And I assured her that it would make it. But anyway, when I went up to get the gas in the gas cans, to make a long story even longer, or to make a short story long, one of the things I noticed was there were four or five people that went into the gas station while I was there pumping gas. I mean, actually went into the building. And not one of those people were wearing a mask. Now, I talked about the mask thing before. Don't want to harp on the mask thing. But this time a week ago, out of those four or five people that went in, probably one or two wouldn't have worn the mask. So I want to urge everybody to remember, just because we're opening up things in our state and they're opening up things in other states, don't truly let your guard down. Still be a little bit cautious of this thing. You know, and, if, and again, like I've said before, if not for your own safety, but the safety of those that you come in contact with. And I'm not saying wear a mask. It was just an observation that uh, people, along with the people that I saw the videos of out at bars and restaurants, <clears throat> that if people may be, you know, getting too excited, the weather is warm or warmer, I mean, obviously, you can see I'm, I've got on Mrs. Moto Map Man's favorite sweatshirt of mine. And I say that sarcastically. She hates this damn thing because it's bright orange. It's not as bright as it used to be. But, but anyway, um, we haven't had snow in over a week. Damn, he's taking a drink. it's warmer than it had been. And we have had days in the 70s, pushing 80. It's supposed to be like 73 tomorrow. It's like 60 degrees out right now. But we got a cool wind that makes it feel cooler. And as you can see, there aren't really any trees or anything to block the wind here. And we're up on a hill, so you know, there's nothing to, nothing to stop the breeze. But anyway, things are warming up, so people are feeling a little frisky and whatnot because it's warmer. And anyway, I'm sure some of you have noticed and have been able to get out on your bikes that because of a lot of things shut down and now things opening up, um, I think a lot of people have forgotten how to drive. They're having to relearn again <laughs> how to drive. Damn dandelions. Um, you know, so be careful of that as well. But anyway, that's all I really wanted to talk about. A lot of nothing. Main thing was wanted to try out, see how this worked. Never done this on the on the track on the ride mower before. And you know, I've done the snow vlogs on the the tractor in the snow, but with those, I just throw on my motor vlogging helmet to do that. This was something a little bit different. You had the GoPro mounted to 
the GoPro chassis mount, and then uh, an external microphone hooked up to that, the, the Sony stereo mic that we use for off the bike stuff. Don't know how well that's going to work because it doesn't have any kind of wind sock or dead cat or anything on it. Because we don't need that in the house. Again, I apologize for the audio in my last photo vlog. I didn't know it, but the little windsock thing fell off my helmet um, I, from carrying the helmet out to the garage when it, it fell off. Because when I got back um, from my ride, I found it on the floor of the garage. So it came off from carrying the helmet or came off when I was putting the helmet on or whatever, but I didn't know it was missing. And boy, you can tell the difference. But anyway, hope everybody enjoyed this. I know it's kind of goofy. For those of you that stuck around at the end, thank you. I don't know how I'm going to put this on YouTube or to be honest with you, if it ever makes it to YouTube. But anyway, if it does, I hope you liked it. If you did, you know, click the like and subscribe button, punch the bell. Leave me comments on what you thought of it, you know, and, and whatnot. I hope, I hope you're able to get out on two. This is a Wednesday, and I'm mowing on Wednesday, so that hopefully, weather permitting, I can get out on two this weekend. Not have to cut, spend a weekend cutting the grass. But anyway... If you get out on Tuesday, make sure you keep the shiny side up, the rubber side down. Hope you have a great day. Um, hope you're able to get out and about and do some things as things are opening up. Visit visit your local parks and whatnot. Take a look online at things in your local area that, you know, this would be a good time to investigate some of the things that we all take for granted. That's one of those things that we've been trying to do visiting some parks that are real close to us that to be honest we don't even think about we just drive by them all the time you know because there's plenty of time to see them some other day but i'll be honest with you i've lived in a lot of places and there are a lot of things that i didn't see in those places when i lived there because they're right around the corner and i can go see them anytime because you know i live here it's not a big deal and then I move away and didn't see him. So anyway, like I was saying, check out the places that are local to you. Don't just support the local businesses, which is a good thing to do, and we all should be doing anyway. But support your local parks, too. You know, check them out. Now you might find out there's something there that you really enjoy. If not, at least you can say, well, I've been there, done that. Boy, that was a damn waste of time. But at least give them a shot. In some cases, your taxes are paying for them. Might as well find out where your tax money's going and what it's going to. But anyway, hope everybody has a great day. Stay safe. You know, and, and make sure you're helping to keep others safe as well. Till next time, see ya.